Karaj's t-shirt to show that I'm also part of the family here. So let's see if we get the, the picture here. So how many of you have heard about taxi flight? Yeah. Or how many of you actually have tried to order a taxi? <laughs> Some of you. Okay. Cool. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Marcus uh, couldn't uh, come today as he life is pretty fast and I think he decided to go to uh, Poland on Tuesday. So, yeah, planning long time ahead is difficult in startup, so he doesn't know uh, if he should be on uh, Tuesday in Barcelona to open the market there or meet the investors in London. So, it is pretty tough uh, and tough work and a lot of things going on every day. So, uh, <coughs> very quickly about myself, so yeah, I think would be better if Marcus would be here because he's more of your age, I'm over 30 and I'm pretty old as I'm already told, but uh, yeah, I have to replace him as, as he's away. So I have been uh, doing IT related businesses and startups for about 15 years, I have studied in Estonian business school. I chose this school because it was in central town and I didn't actually like the technical university which was so far away and also one reason was that they organized first Estonian business Olympiad in 97 and I happened to win that so they gave me first year for free so that's why I went to EVS uh, but uh, I started my first company in the first year of uh, EVS it was a web company and uh, we, it was acquired in two years and uh, in the end it went bankrupt and then I worked in Dallin Stock Exchange and Skype and for two more different startups. So yeah, have been quite a ride. And Garage 48 was founded in 2010, so it's about five years now. And uh, Taxify was founded about two and a half, year, half years ago. So where we are today, uh, as Ragnar was also telling about growth, you need to grow quite a lot. And it's much easier to grow where you are actually a young company. It's much more difficult when you already have some scale and some numbers. So last year for Taxify it was great. I think we grew 20 or 25 times, so it actually doesn't matter because the start numbers were so small. And uh, today we are in range of doing 130 to 150,000 uh, rides per month. And uh, we have grown from January last year two employees. Uh, today we have 30 and from one market to seven markets. So it has been quite the right. Uh, so as the today's topics is going to new markets, then uh, basically here you can see that we started from Tallinn a year ago. We have now cars in uh, four or five cities in Helsinki or in Finland. We have basically all cities in uh, Estonia, I think, except for Narva and Rakvere, but I think all the major other cities uh, you can order a car in Estonia. Then in Latvia we have Valmiera and Riga, and Lithuania we have Kaunas uh, and uh, Vilnius, and uh, currently also first uh, test clients in, uh, in Warsaw, Poland, and also planning to probably open Krakow and uh, and Gdansk in, in Poland within the next few months. Uh, we are also operating in Netherlands, Amsterdam, and uh, there are cars also in Barcelona, but we are not officially open there yet. It's, it's to be open during February. And we have a partner in uh, Georgia, that is in uh, Tbilisi. So they are doing pretty well now. So. We have quite, and it's out of here is also South Africa that should be launched uh, within a month and it's also operated by a partner. Our main focus is here, so these here we operate with our own teams and then some markets that are a bit far away we operate via partners there. So uh, if you know Taxify is a, it's a marketplace, so uh, we need on one hand drivers, on the other hand we need customers and uh, it would be good if there would be roughly the same amount of demand from both sides. So if you have many drivers and less customers, then the drivers get pissed off and they leave the platform. If you have many uh, customers and few drivers, then customers are unhappy because they can't take the taxi. So uh, in that sense, it's really important what kind of business you actually do. So we are 
in that sense, we are in offline business. If Ragnar is uh, doing uh, quite great, this is fully online. So you can operate in wherever markets, you basically translate your system and it works. But in our case, uh, each new market, we have to actually start from scratch. Because if we have uh, 200,000 users in Tallinn, it helps us quite little in Riga, because when we go to a new market, we have zero drivers and zero customers. So we should basically start from scratch, trying to get first 10 customers, trying to get first 100, or sorry, first 10 drivers, 100 customers, and then scale it in, in balance so that both sides would actually work together. So uh, definitely, whatever business you are planning, <coughs> think of the fundamentals, what you need to have, and uh, then based on that, uh, plan your execution. So, so we can say that uh, home market is very cool, but actually going to abroad is a totally different thing. So uh, in Estonia, I think in the last one, two years, we have probably gotten I mean, 200 articles in media, so we have lost the count long ago. In Riga, on the, during the last four or five months, we have got three articles. So uh, even that kind of thing is quite different in foreign markets. So what, what works here, as on your home market, you can't rely on that on the, on the foreign markets, because Markus here is a cool guy, he's a young entrepreneur, He's Estonian, everyone likes it, so newspapers uh, write about it. If he goes to Riga, no one knows about it, he's an Estonian guy, the media doesn't care. So all of that kind of things you, you have to consider and, and uh, learn from that. So uh, each market also has local problems. So if we think that ordering a taxi by calling is really old school, who would like to do that? or versus using the mobile app, which is cool, you can choose your own taxi, you see the taxi arriving, everything seems to be really cool. We think that, okay, it works in Thailand, let's go to Riga or let's go to Vilnius. It actually doesn't work like that. You need to basically go in, the, go in Riga, live there for at least several weeks, talk to hundreds of local people, and then you're starting to figure out what actually works there or what not. So uh, initially, when we did that, um, we did it quite badly, so we actually didn't know what to look at in the market and uh, which market is good and which is not. So basically, we were several months already in Riga when we found out that uh, the number of taxis in Riga is about uh, like 30% less than in Tallinn. If you go to the wrong market it, and you start working there, the investment is actually pretty big and the investment is two sides. One is the money you actually invest, you need to hire people and all of that. And the other is actually the opportunity cost. So you spend a lot of time on running the market. And if the market is wrong, you actually lost the opportunity because on the same time other guys are doing that in other cities. And if you waste your focus and attention on the wrong market, then basically you could have done that in some other place and maybe got better results. So that uh, going and choosing markets is, in that sense, very, very important. Not to waste money, which is very expensive. You can lose hundreds of thousands of euros pretty easily in bigger cities. And, uh, but the even more important is, uh, is this uh, opportunity cost. Because uh, if, if you are not operating in the right market, then you just lose the momentum on time, and some other guy will do it for you. Uh, one thing that Taxify is different from the other apps is that most taxi apps today, they take individual drivers, uh, taxi drivers. So if you know Uber, then Uber is taking even totally regular people who have cars and then try to get them transport other people. So our approach is different. We work with taxi companies and we, as you might know, many of them still in Europe are pretty old school. They operate it by people who are 40, 50, 60 year old, they are not actually technology freaks. They don't understand what is mobile app and things like that. They know that I have a radio and the dispatcher lady can tell to the radio that I have a customer here in Ravala 7 and which of the drivers would like to take that up. So for them, doing some kind of internet-based thing, using mobiles, location-based things, the mindset is, is pretty difficult. So we actually have to 
convince them uh, and uh, spend a lot of time actually to to get these guys understand what we do different. We are not directly their competitors, but to actually help them to work with a modern world today and use all the technology available and uh, all of that side. So it takes it takes time because it's it's an old industry and people have done things in their way for 20, 30, 50 years. Then uh, it's also uh, calling from the customer side. It's the calling versus using the app. It's the same thing. So many people have been used to calling taxis and uh, for them it's very difficult to change. So uh, there must be a very big, unique uh, value proposition to actually change. So in Tallinn it seems to have worked because in Tallinn it's 35 taxi companies all of them roughly same size of fleet and if you call one they are busy, you call another they are busy then the app came on the market and, uh, and basically you got all the taxis from one app in Riga the situation is different there are some companies that have big fleets and most of the time when you go there you actually get a taxi and that's also in, in some other markets so the problem we are solving there is totally different it's not so that uh, you get all the taxes, but their value proposition must be better and people, if they have used to calling a company and always getting a taxi, then for them to moving over from calling to app is much different kind of thing when in Thailand you actually have a big program and then that solves that, so, uh, so that's the difference. And uh, of course, going to new markets, uh, as in all startup life, it's actually a big roller coaster. So one day you get the deal, the next day you sign some company, the next day you hear that, okay, there are some problems that maybe their drivers doesn't have mobile phones or something that works to the system, then the next day you solve part of it, then you get another problem, so it's really like always up and down. So good news and bad news, they are coming basically from all channels, so you have to be pretty strong to actually survive in this, in this environment and, and still be positive and, and see the longer term vision. So uh, yeah, that's, that's the start of life. So uh, what we have learned is that uh, when you start something small, you have like two guys sitting in a kitchen doing a startup, everything goes pretty well because or mostly what can happen is growth and uh, you have quite uh, few communication problems because you are the two guys in the company and basically you know every day what's going on. So uh, if the company grows, like in our case, within the one year we have now seven countries and 30 people, it's much more different. So people should, uh, should understand where the company is growing, if you need to make decisions, change strategy, maybe pivot to your product, whatever things you do, there are like 30 people, they are not in the same office and uh, they all have their own mindsets so uh, getting them all aligned so that they actually know where the company is going what are the new features how to sell the new features if there are bugs and all of that thing that's a really real challenge to actually get this all aligned and uh, building processes in a way that you won't become a corporate organization where everything is written down everyone has long memos and all of that that is a challenge and also, uh, uh, it's quite important that we have people in seven different cities. If they work alone for a few weeks, it's already they feel that they are not in the headquarters and uh, they, they are independent. They tend to lose uh, their contact. So uh, to overcome that, we basically send people to visit the local offices every second or third week so that we always have people there, they share the communication with the headquarter, they tell about the culture, they know more about what's going on and all of that part. So, so just Skype is, uh, is not enough in our case, so we need really to uh, send people to the local offices and also bring them back to the headquarter and uh, so they could actually meet and talk and work closely with all their colleagues all the time. So. So that's what we have seen also as a challenge. And of course, choosing people is, is the number one thing. What Ragnar said is that uh, they put a lot of attention for uh, choosing the right people. Then uh, we, we have had challenges with that within the first year. Uh, Marcus 
was really young and uh, was hiring people quite fast and he has made also mistakes so I think in our case we have uh, probably have to let go about five people within this year and uh, hire next ones to replace them and there have been uh, different situations so some of the people were hired for a wrong role that uh, because the company was growing so fast we actually didn't know what kind of people we needed and what was the role definition so he hired someone that felt good but in the end actually the role turned out to be different so it seems that these people didn't fit that well and uh, also some people just couldn't deliver what was expected or agreed so also we had to go apart so uh, so yeah, I think the growth has been pretty fast and, uh, and there have been lots of challenges related to that. Uh, so, what else? I think one of the main things also to consider whatever project to do is that uh, are you providing a vitamin to the customers or are you providing a painkiller? So that's a big difference. So, and it can be so that in one market you actually are a vitamin and in another market you can be a painkiller. So you have to uh, choose the markets based on that, and uh, and try to try to execute. So, I hope you understand what it means, vitamin and painkiller. So, in one case, there's actually a real problem you are solving, something that people are looking for solutions, and the other one is that you actually have to do a lot of sales and tell people that they might need it, but they actually don't feel the pain themselves. And uh, marketing that kind of product or service is uh, is like. 10 to 100 times more more complicated so whenever you plan something try to uh, try to find something that actually is a painkiller and there is actually a pain so that helps you a lot uh, to grow in your business and uh, and company um, so yeah very roughly that was it so I hope that you might have questions and if you happen to be in any of those countries, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, Netherlands and Belarus, then you can use taxi price up. I didn't mention uh, Georgia, but uh, yeah, if you are in these markets, you can use your uh, taxi buy app there and soon we will also launch in some new countries, probably Hungary, Poland and some more. So, so yeah.